Yeah, uh, I want to talk about uh, secret wars that are going on right now. And, uh, uh, you know, it's amazing how in the United States a lot of these uh, news or events, they just, they don't even make it to the mainstream media. And <clears throat> the public here is very much in the dark or uh, they have surrender the decision making or public opinion to to their own uh, different uh, spy agencies or CIA or Mike Pompeo or and uh, the system here goes out in the world and overthrows any government they want and uh, they uh, they are not really accountable they could uh, they could declare war or uh, or even do the war before uh, the public uh, has any say. So at some point in the past, the, the U.S. public or the Congress uh, could come in or would come in and get into uh, these uh, dealings that are going on and have an opinion. <laughs> well, maybe we don't want all these things going on. Uh, maybe we don't want our public funds to be used in this fashion. But one of the most blatant uh, forms of uh, theft or uh, using American people's money is the, just what has happened the last month. Uh, they, it was found that the U.S. government has given $56 billion worth of uh, military and uh, financial assistance to, uh, you know, basically uh, neo Nazis in Ukraine, and uh, uh, the, then the Russians were coming out. There were all these reports. Uh, hey, uh, we are targeting uh, all these weapons coming in. We are blowing them up. Uh, I think many of these weapons or uh, uh, resources uh, end up uh, in the hands of the Russians. Well, in the Syrian war, I don't know how many weapons and man pads and uh, uh, anti-aircraft uh, Stinger missiles, <laughs> uh, entire uh, squadron of uh, vehicles, uh, handguns, uh, fell into the hands of the uh, Assad regime. I, I think that the maybe the Syrian civil war was the uh, the biggest uh, uh, foreign military aid to the to the regime anyhow uh, then uh, well this same thing uh, was happening in the uh, Iraq war uh, Iraq and the Iran war and there was also concurrently a war of oil uh, ships, which means the uh, uh, United States was helping Kuwait and Bahrain and blowing up the uh, Iranian uh, oil ships, and Iran was doing the same to them. And Iran just was a lot more successful. And then the, the Americans uh, they decided to target Iranian uh, passenger plane. It was actually the a U.S. ship called Vincent that they blew up Iranian passenger plane with three, four hundred passengers. So at that time, Khomeini said that, hey, we don't want to continue this uh, war of uh, oil rigs. Uh, why don't we make some kind of ceasefire? Or, and then it, the, the secret war between U.S. and the United States kind of wind down a little bit at that time and then it started in a different context but uh, the same is going with the with the Israel but then there is a difference that uh, uh, Iran and also Syrian regimes and many regimes or people that ha have been getting their asses kicked by United States or Israel they have become technologically uh, and otherwise very advanced and they they will retaliate uh, well, I heard in the Iranian news that uh, the Iranian drone 
had uh, tracked. I, I think they have more than just drones. They have very sophisticated uh, satellite and other uh, eavesdropping uh, technologies and tracking technology that tracked the vehicle and th this vehicle had uh, in uh, was in uh, Kurdistan and had uh, uh, Mossad the officer and this guy had been the planner or uh, operative that had ordered killing of uh, 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 Iranian uh, intelligence officer uh, I think his name was Sayyad Khodai and they had tracked his vehicle and they used the uh, suicide or uh, the drone bearing or a uh, rocket bearing drone to hit it and they had killed him uh, then uh, they didn't care about the drone, the drone was thrown somewhere or landed somewhere and then the, all kinds of Kurdish people, they were gathered around the drone, they were taking pictures of it, wondering where this drone came from, what was it for it, but the, 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 the war has been going on and the Iranian government promised that every attack that's uh, launched on us will respond with the multiple, like they would say, if you attack one of our officers, we'll, we'll kill 10 of your officers. And many uh, Mossad officers are getting killed or gunned down inside Israel. Well, then, uh, with the, well, the, none of this stuff, all these uh, secret hitting each other, uh, has. Uh, has diminished the war, general war that's going on and there is all these reports coming out. I guess many Americans, they, they, they don't pay attention or they can't uh, understand Farsi, but the, the, then the, there were reports that uh, Mike Pompeo had uh, gone to the uh, state of Albany and met with the leader of a uh, Iranian terrorist organization MKO that and this organization which is a terrorist organization had uh, managed uh, like 20 years ago 30 years ago to blow up Iranian parliament <laughs> and they uh, they just about kill everybody uh, or more than half of the uh, senators and injured many of them and then uh, which resulted in a mass execution of uh, all their members or as many of their members that the Iranian government could get their hands on <laughs> and then <laughs> the Iranian government has told the, uh, publicly that we are going to assassinate uh, Trump and Pompeo and uh, uh, what's the other one, uh, General McKenzie, who were re responsible for planning and uh, uh, killing the Iranian general, the highest ranking general and, uh, in Iran was only the number two statesman in the, in the entire government. <laughs> <laughs> well, would this uh, action and subsequent actions have uh, consequences for Mr. Mike Pompeo and uh, uh, General McKenzie or even Trump? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but the, the question uh, an American or an Iranian or somebody unfortunate enough to be caught in between, like Iranian, Irano-American that have uh, been here many years, is that uh, why isn't there any accountability in Congress, in the or in the U.S. Senate, for all these criminal acts that uh, is directed to a foreign country that has no no interest here in the United States or we don't have an interest over there and, and pursuing these uh, policies or philosophies 
uh, how does that help us? How, how, uh, it doesn't make us safe here. It doesn't make Mr. Mike Pompeo safe. He's probably going to get uh, popped, but uh, 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 there is accountability. For example, something happens like that in Iran. I Iranians are up in arms. Like uh, when uh, our general Soleimani was assassinated, th there was millions of people in the street, and the government uh, promised. And there was also a major attack on the uh, on U.S. bases, uh, uh, Taji base, and the other one was at Al Assad base. Uh, and I think that's happening with the, these secret wars and uh, nobody talks about is that uh, the, the Americans and the Israelis are hiding losses, hiding significant losses. For example, there is reports that uh, about 148 American servicemen died in uh, in uh, Al Assad base when the, when they were attacked, and uh, the only thing that came out was that, oh we just had like uh, uh, I don't know 40 people who were, had concoctions, but uh, that's a blatant lie. Uh, if uh, uh, the U.S. media journalism were honest, uh, actually the Americans widely knew the consequences or the stuff that's happening there uh, they would be outraged I think um, most Americans uh, I don't know they are uh, such patsies such uh, uh, you know politically and socially inactive uh, I don't know what the, what's the name for such <laughs> <laughs> loser population what I mean I, I, I have to kind of look back into the history uh, to see what what you call this such population what you call such uh, uh, such uh, uh, kinds of journalism well Salente cusses a lot I don't cuss as much but he, he comes out and calls them prostitutes and I don't know what, uh, well, I think that uh, on our side, on the Iranian side, carrying on uh, with the secret war that's becoming more and more deadly, it does not help us. Uh, in fact, uh, many Iranian journalists are, uh, are coming out and they're publishing uh, all, all the details uh, of uh, what is happening uh, militarily and also uh, everything that might happen very soon. Uh, well, I talked about some of this stuff in my other video profiling, uh, but another thing that's happening is that uh, because uh, of long uh, sanctions from this has been going on since 1980. Well, that's like what 42 years before now I Iranians have gone back to uh, manufacturing just about absolutely any kind of weapon that you can imagine and, and, in, and they are not publishing the uh, in reports about uh, weapons that ha they have developed and they are in operation now that uh, far uh, surpass uh, U.S. Uh, or Western weapons, and they compete uh, with the best uh, ch uh, Chinese or Russian weapons. Uh, I think ours are a bit better, but uh, you know, I, it, it would be a real surprise. I, I, I was listening to one report that. Uh, Iranian uh, military has developed uh, Shahab 7, which is the ballistic cruise missile with a very long range. I think uh, the range was uh, 7,000 kilometers or more. 
I don't, I don't think they're saying all the stuff that they have developed uh, that they have access to, but this one that they had, uh, they had talked about, and this is a, a rocket system that can carry a large conventional payload of uh, nuclear weapons that can uh, like uh, uh, be fired from say uh, in the Khorasan or in interior of Iran and come straight and blow up Pentagon or, uh, or White House or there, there is no uh, there is no impediment in time or distance uh, well, one of these days, this ugly war that's now secret is just going to uh, burst into the open, uh, the, the retaliation. Well, the good thing about the uh, Iranian military that uh, as a kind of American could be uh, kind of feel good about is they, they don't uh, uh, target civilian areas. They don't... You, you, you probably will not see an Iranian uh, cruise missile hitting Los Angeles, the inner city or Santa Monica, but uh, they do uh, target the military sites. Uh, for example, uh, Pendleton can come in uh, under fire or uh, Peace Air Force Base in East the United States. Those are legitimate target uh, and uh, well, the other thing that uh, really uh, has become sophisticated is all the intense uh, uh, spying equipment, tracking equipment, uh, collection of satellites that uh, Iran and Russia has developed. And they help each other. Uh, well, uh, this, uh, this is a surprising kind of uh, news. I think I, I'm not aware of all that the uh, Russians, uh, US, uh, I mean Russian and Iranian military or Chinese military have. But there was one other report I was listening to was that uh, uh, China has uh, sold Iran recently a kind of uh, device that is, I think there, there is similar one in the United States that uh, it, it will listen to millions or billions of calls and uh, it's like an artificial intelligence sift through them and figure out uh, groups of people their interconnection. Americans have something like that. Uh, I, I forgot the name I was reading about it, but uh, I, I, I think this, this secret war is uh, First of all, it's not going to be secret anymore, and it's going to get very ugly in the open. And you see, uh, I wish that uh, in, in the United States there was uh, a more open uh, journalism that people would be able to uh, to come to know this inf information and also kind of have an opinion of uh, if we here want to participate in this. Well, in the, in the United States, a lot of the media and the Congress or politicians are really sold out to the APAC, which is the Israeli lobby, and uh, they won't say or do anything uh, that uh, would jeopardize their fun, uh, their relation with Israel. I don't know why Israel is so important to us. Uh, <laughs> why, why we care so much? Uh, well, the only uh, there is like a couple of politicians, like uh, Ron Paul or Rand Paul. Uh, they, they'll come out sometimes. They will say that hey, uh, we don't want. Uh, our resources uh, or participate uh, in uh, in the wars that Israel wants to enact. Or well, Rand Paul came out and said that he, he doesn't support all these monies given to uh, Ukrainian uh, 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 fascists. 
The $56 billion is a lot of money. Uh, I wonder what else we could do with that money if we had on, uh, our hands on it. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to name this video Pompeo, MKO, and Killing Iranians. That's uh, like what the U.S. government does. It goes out and hires foreign terrorist organizations and pays them money and weapon to kill off, uh, you know, whatever population that they don't like. Uh, the same with the uh, uh, Ukrainian fascists. They are doing a job for uh, uh, for United States. But the question is, when will the Russians and the Iranians uh, confront U.S. military, its, uh, its uh, intelligence services, and like CIA directly, and you know hit them very hard with the weapons they already have? And would this come as a huge shock to the general population here? Thank you very much for being in my YouTube channel and. Uh, please subscribe, uh, uh, leave comments. Uh, I don't receive any kind of uh, uh, support from uh, anybody, and this is an independent opinion. I think it's much more worthwhile. Uh, you should subscribe and leave comments. Thank you very much.